A man has been charged with dangerous driving after stealing a Porsche and causing havoc on the M1 earlier today. The 23-year-old Ashmore man was arrested by police shortly after his destructive tour around the Gold Coast and charged with one count of uh, one count each of dangerous operation of a motor vehicle and unlawful use of a motor vehicle, the Courier Mail reported. Two stolen cars, including a luxury Porsche, were left in a ruin after the dramatic car chase, while police and bystanders were lucky to be alive. The chase, which stretched across two hours, was called off three times as the desperate driver read uh, ran red lights, drove the wrong way down the M1 and hit speeds of more than 150 kilometres an hour. Now, what was that miles per hour? 93. Yeah. Okay. He was eventually cornered by police in the Telebudra Valley and pulled from a moving utility truck about 1pm. So it's like an SUV thing. Uh, police first spotted the man driving a stolen Porsche Boxster through Mudraba in the Gold Coast West. He led officers through several suburbs covering more than 100 kilometres, which is like, yeah, 50 miles or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, uh, chasing police aban- <laughs> abandoned the pursuit three times when it was too dangerous to continue. At one point, the Channel 7 helicopter helped police continue the pursuit after the pilot spotted the car speeding along a nearby road. Uh, after blowing a tyre, the man continued to drive at high speed before the wheel was ripped from the car, clipping a vehicle travelling in the other direction. On three wheels, he continued to push the Porsche to the limits. Ha! Huh, I said it properly this time. Narrowly missing a pedestrian, but it soon spun out of control and crashed into a timber fence. The fugitive then allegedly stole a Nissan Navara from the front yard of a nearby property as the owner watched in shock. A short time later, he slid off the road, shredding more tyres, then running on wheel rims, he was finally cornered. It's believed the Porsche is the same one stolen from a Mudraba address last month and later used in a series of break-ins across the city. Okay, now I'm going to ask you the question again. What colour car would you steal if you were going to steal a car? Not that we're condoning stealing cars. Yes, we do not condone that. Um, well, my serious answer was black, and my funny answer was um, uh, camouflage. Yes, this idiot chose to pick a bright canary yellow Porsche. Wow. So, yes, the Channel 7 chopper could see it because it was bleeding freaking obvious. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and Speaking I... of things that are obvious. Just yeah. kidding. <laughs> but, you know... um. They said allegedly he stole a Nissan Navara. Sorry, it's on video. There's no allegedly about it. We saw it on national TV. So they need to stop with the alleged when they've got it on tape. That one just, yeah. Well, legally I think they have to say that. I don't know exactly why, but they really, you know, when they catch someone like this, they don't want to leave any stone unturned as far as being able to legally loophole your way out of it. But that's like saying he was allegedly an idiot and he was allegedly picking the wrong damn car and yeah. You know, you picked the black Well, at Porsche. least it wasn't like the um, the jackass guy, Ryan Dunn. Yeah. Could be worse. Could have been a Porsche 911 that, you know, was doing like a hundred and something miles an hour. And then, you know, crashed and looked like absolutely nothing when it was done. But couldn't you imagine being the, the owner of the car? Because they did say that it had been involved in other things, like, previously. You'd be thinking, why did it pick the yellow one? You know, stupid yeah. stupid people pick the yellow Porsche. Because, you know, that's not obvious or anything. No. Why would you go after... I mean, why? I don't really like the color yellow. So why would you pick that color to begin with? I don't know. Why would you pick a Porsche? This is true. Jeremy Clarkson would love our show. Yes, because he hates Porsches. And I hate Porsches. (laughs) I like Porsches as long as I've got the wing on the back, because without the wing, they just look like one of those stupid bloody dogs that have their tail chopped off. Oh, no. We have a commercial. It's like, um, basically, what is it? It's showing all these different situations that you can use a Porsche in. And mm-hmm. it's like one of them is, um, 
a getaway vehicle and it shows this guy sitting in the car and he's like in a business suit and he's revving the engine. And then the last scene you see is this bright yellow Porsche mm-hmm. pulling up to a school and the kids are jumping in the back and it says, or a school bus. And I was like, uh, really? It's a Porsche. You're not going to fit a kid in the back seat. It's just not going to happen. That's well, false apparently... advertising. It's totally crap. And my well, apparently ringing. they did. Actually, they did. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think it's a Porsche 911, but it's, it's apparently they've stretched it out. Speaking of, real quick, have you seen the new Volkswagen? No. They have come out with a new Volkswagen. You know how um, the Vol- the Volkswagen Bug usually looks like a um, a bug. It's all smushed. Yeah. Yeah, looks like a bug. They have stretched it out to where it looks like when you first see it, it looks like a um, a Porsche or you know one of these other supercars. And then, you know, but it still has the typical rounded um, wheel thing, I'll those just things say, over the tires. Right now, you were. It doesn't look that bad, believe it or not, because you're you're used to seeing a, because uh, we thought it was a commercial for another Porsche or something, you know, something, so, so, blah, blah, something along those lines. But then they went, no, it's a Volkswagen. I was like, What? Mm. It looks like they took the Volkswagen. It looks like they took the Volkswagen bug and stepped on it and smushed it out. So does that make it the the Volkswagen smoosh? Yes, I don't know what it is. <laughs> or maybe they called it pop because that's generally the noise that bugs make when you step on them. Uh, I hate <laughs> that noise. Okay, no, it's so gross. It's like that little. <laughs> it's like that lig- the last scream of the little bug. It's like. <laughs> Squish. Um, Squish. Yeah, there is no segue. Good luck. No, there is. <laughs> yeah. Um. Nope, I got nothing. <clears throat> nope, me neither. There's no way to segue from bugs into um Scottish radio stations <laughs> or sandwiches. I've tried. Mm. Um. I guess you could throw in there something about a um. Five dollar foot long is also a good, really penis joke. Speaking of innuendos, I have a good one right here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, not only did I do an innuendo, I did a sandwich too. I am two for two. Yes. Woo-hoo! All right. So anyway, Scottish radio station claims no difference between swearing and sandwiches. A simple sandwich or a sinister swear word. Apparent confusion over the word panini has landed a community radio station in trouble. Scottish outfit Brick FM has been pulled up for playing songs featuring the F word and punani. And it's the latter that's causing a stir. Management reckons the broadcasters are unaware that punani was sexual slang for female genitals, popularized by Sasha Baron Cohen, character Ali G. Instead, they apparently thought the lyrics were panini a sandwich sold locally and is made of Italian bread with cheese and tomato, which is heated up. It's unclear if Brick FM is defense is sarcastic as they went on to tell media regulation off calm of calm. Sorry. Of I'm going to so mess that up. And it's going to make this even worse <laughs> of calm. You just fill in the blanks of where you think I'm going to mess this one up. Yeah. Or how Yeah. that the F word was also not to be considered offensive. The F word is, according to Brick, a commonly used word in Scotland which is not considered offensive locally. But Ofcom, accused of not understanding local customs, is having none of it. Irrespective of whether the word, uh, whether the F word is used in a sexual context or as an expression of anger, our research indicates the word and its derivatives are examples of the most offensive language. Ofcom, therefore, does not accept Brick FM's argument that the word is not considered offensive in Scotland. In Ofcom's view, the broadcast of this language clearly had the potential to offend. Again, I will say this once more, a um, little history lesson for you. The F word stands for fornication under consent of the king, because back way, way, way a long time ago, <clears throat> <coughs> sorry, still a little sick, um, in order to... Um, fornicate or to even be married you had to have the permission of the king um that's where the f word came from so i don't see why people make such a big deal about it Mm. but i know like here in america 
um, the F word is like one of the biggest sins. Like the if if America had any ch- had any choice, um, there'd be seven deadly sins with a new one at the bottom that says saying the F word. Yeah. <laughs> will send you directly to hell. That's how people treat it. Mm. But on the other hand, in Queensland courtrooms, you're actually allowed to use it as long as you're using it in its correct termination. See, that that's weird to me. Not weird in a bad way, but just weird as, whoa, that's so cool. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I suppose in that way they're, they're desensitizing the swearing of it. Because if you use it correctly, then technically it's not a swear word. Well, it's just like using the word ass. Yes. It, it's written in the Bible that a man tied his ass to a tree. Now, you can take that one way or the other. Yeah. You, you can know. either take that as a guy actually literally t- tied his ass to a tree. And got very bad <laughs> splinters in places he didn't want. Well, that goes along with the whole joke of, you know, the uh, most flexible material or the the flex, most flexible and stretchy material on the earth is the human flesh. It says so in the Bible. A man tied his ass to a tree and walked for many miles. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so you can either use it in you know, terms of on your body, or you can use it how it's meant to be used as a donkey. Hell is the same way. Um, damn is also another uh, Christian derivative, you know, to be damned. Mm-hmm. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Pretty much.